Underneath it all, who are we sexually? Bible, cufflinks, and stilettos, with Giselle St. James. For mature audiences only. Watch Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos on Carib Vision, midnight on Mondays, and Friday nights at 11 p.m. Sponsored by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Welcome to Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos. We are here tonight, and you know that we're here to have open and honest, real, practical conversations surrounding sexual issues, concerns, and practices amongst faith-based couples for better relationship outcomes. Listen to me. We know sex isn't the magic solution for everything that's going on in our marriages, but listen to me. Good sex sure does make the marriage nice. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh the two will become one flesh what a scripture i used this particular scripture because ladies and gentlemen when we get married and you know the pastor read the scripture, whoever we ask to read the scripture. This is one of those things that they read. And when we look at what it means to become one flesh, it tells me that there is a sexual component. I would have said in some episodes before this, that in order to be deemed as married, you have to consummate the relationship. You have to consummate that legal covenant that you have with your spouse, meaning that you join together and become one flesh, one flesh. So it tells me from this scripture that sex is something that we need to be paying attention to. Yes, we come together as one in many other ways, you know, one in thought, you know, one in terms of finances, but we are also ultimately one when we come together physically to celebrate the love that we have for each other. So if the scripture notes that right here, sex is an important part to say whether or not someone is married. Why don't we talk about it in our premarital counseling sessions? Hmm? Just like finances, intimacy may be one of those taboo topics in our relationships. In many cultures, including our own, it is not proper to talk about intimacy and sexual education it's not. Sometimes if you hear somebody talking about sex, they start looking them fun like, why is she so vulgar? I'm sure that many persons are thinking that I'm vulgar right now. It's okay. It's okay. But we're from a culture that we don't openly talk about sex or intimacy. Sometimes when we even refer to sex, it is in some ways that have some veiled things over it. We don't want to openly talk about it. So it says something like them they or them are dogs. <laughs> All of these words that we use for sex because we don't want to explicitly say sex. So we don't talk about it, right? 
and then let, let's not talk let's not go there where we talk about our uncomfortable health classes when i'm talking about the male reproductive organs and the female reproductive organs and how to make a baby not to mention those odd birds and the bees talk that we have with our mother and father anybody didn't know them there i know i had those uncomfortable talks with my parents me know that and it never did nice, made it feel really uncomfortable. But we are not cultured to talk about sex and talk about really what pleases us. Hmm? Since issues around sex and intimacy is one of the causes for divorce for couples, it is therefore essential, ladies and gentlemen, to cover it in premarital counseling. So before we get into the whole gamut of sex, let us explore the larger topic of intimacy. Now, according to Hope Merlis in her blog post, Premarital Counseling, Sex and Intimacy, intimacy consists of both emotional closeness and a sexual connection. Intimacy consists of both an emotional closeness and a sexual connection. In a strong relationship, they are like two sides of the same coin, yeah? It's like one can't exist without the other. And if you have one, you must have the other, right? Sexual connection without emotional openness is not fulfilling for the heart. And emotional connection without sexual expression renders the marriage more like a friendship. Hmm? Never thought of that, don't it? Yeah, man. So think about it. When you've hit a snag in your relationship and you realize that, okay, I know this person inside out, but the romance, the fire and the desire, it just not did say that could be the fact that the emotional closeness is there, but the sexual connection need a little bit of revival. Yeah that could be the reason all right so if we are thinking about it that, that way it's important then to talk about both as persons plan for marriage in order to make sure that sex is satisfying and <laughs> you get to deepen your connection so we have to talk about it ladies and gentlemen it's imperative that we talk about these things before we get into the marital relationship. Now, here are some questions Hope says are important for your pastor or your counselor to ask you before you sit, while you sit down and have those premarital counseling sessions. Now, she says one of them is, what excites you about being at home together? And for my married couples who are tuning in tonight, you can probably write down these questions because as I said, it's not just for couples who are engaging now in premarital counseling. We are talking about persons even who have hit a snag, who realize that, listen to me, they need to spruce things back up. So these could be questions that you ask each other. You get what I'm saying? So let's see what these questions are. So number one is what excites you about being at home together? What is it? Is it just that you like to be in their company? Now, when I was um, getting married, one of the Bibles that I read for, you know, getting into the mind of marriage was the five love languages. Now, as I read the five love languages, I realized that one of my love languages or my primary love language was quality time. Now, quality time for me was not how people would often see quality time. Quality time for me was not I have to be in the person's space all the time and we have to be talking every day and I have to in and face a bus bump. No. Quality time for me was that I could be on the couch, him and another coach, my feet in his lap, and I'm reading a book and he's watching sports. That was quality time for me. I am seeing him and interacting with him in some particular way. And it also satisfied his need for physical touch because that was his 
love language. So I would be touching him. I'd be reading my book and I'd be touching him, playing with his hair or his air or just touching him. So that would satisfy both of us. I am spending quality time with my husband, even though we were doing separate things. And I was also satisfying his physical touch, which listen to me when we start touch, sometimes it turned into bigger touch. But you know, I digress. I digress. But yes, right? So that would be something that excited me about being at home together, just being able to be in his space. We could have a nice little conversation that lasts for maybe an hour and I'd be good because I'm talking to my husband. We're having a nice little discussion. Saturday mornings were my favorite because we'd be in bed. We had a TV in our room. We'd be in bed and the morning come by 9.30, Justice League or Justice League Unlimited would start playing on a Saturday morning and we would just lie in bed and watch Justice League. Saturday mornings were my favorite. Quality time, ladies and gentlemen. So those things excited me about being home together. And listen to me, sometimes we wouldn't even leave the bed because we didn't sleep in clothes together. So, you know, Saturday morning would probably turn into Saturday afternoon. Hint, hint, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but those things were my favorite I loved it. So ask each other the question, what excites you about being at home together? I saw that um, my, my, my producer was putting in some real nice gems. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Kelly ASMR says, I get it a lot, but I won't be left lacking in sex knowledge. It's too important. Hello. 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 Of of course not. We ain't going to do that. We don't play that kind of game around here. Bible cufflinks and stilettos, that's from my show. Intimacy consists of both emotional closeness. I love the repetition. Make sure that you get that part. Make sure you get that part, ladies and gentlemen. Right? So ask yourself, what excites you about being at home together? The next thing, when do you feel most connected to your partner? Always have an idea of when you feel most connected to your partner. It could be a time of day. It could be part, a particular activity that makes you feel most connected. When do you feel most connected? Another question that you can ask is, are you comfortable discussing your sexual likes and dislikes? Persons who are getting married, this is such an important question for your counselor to lead you with because with a question like this it can lead to something like a follow-up discussion because if you do feel comfortable then that is when you both test the waters by now expressing what are those things that you like and you dislike so you have to feel comfortable you have to also create that comfortability within your relationship where your spouse can come to you about something that they want to try, something that they like. And for couples who are married, are you in a, a relationship where you do feel comfortable talking about it? Have you felt ashamed in recent times? How do you get back to that place where you can share with your, your husband or your wife I like to dress up. I like to look sexy for you. I like to do a little sexy dance. We have to get to a place where we are now being comfortable with each other to share our likes and dislikes. All right. The next thing for our premarital couples and even for our married couples is do you want to be monogamous? Yes, you went ahead and you put a ring on it. And you said the wedding is in two months' time. But it could be that a little time down the road, you feel that you are polyamorous. Instead of setting up your husband or your wife for heartbreak, it's best to say it openly now. 
because as I think it was my counselor who was speaking to us when we were being counseled, she said to us, listen to me, lay all your truths on the table now because it's easier to break up an engagement rather than break up a marriage. And it was such unconventional advice because, I mean, you're almost married. You don't want somebody to tell you that you can break up your engagement or break up your engagement. You don't want somebody to tell you that. But she actually did. You, it's easier to break off an engagement than to break up a marriage. So if you are completely honest with yourself and with each other, it could be that maybe you don't want to be a single man or just not just a, not a single man but you don't just want to be a one man kind of woman or a one woman kind of man but lay it out there on the table so that your spouse can make a decision all right so that's a question that your counselor or your pastor can ask you all right the next one is how do you cope when your desire levels are unmatched? And that is one question that we are going to be asking down the line. Now, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It is important to ask these questions as couples who communicate about emotional and physical connection generally have better sex and greater intimacy. Generally. So you have to be open with each other and always feel free to have those conversations because when you are open in your communication, yo, you will be open like, ooh, in every other way. So ensure that you talk to each other because having a conversation before marriage can help deepen those discussions once you get married. So let's get into it. According to Brad Hambrick, here are 10 premarital questions on sex and intimacy couples should be asking. Now, the first one is, how do you transition from the guilt associated with sex to pleasure with sex? You know, I know that for a lot of our um, premarital couples, this particular question is a big one, especially if you are in church and you're Christians, uh, or you are faith, a faith-based couple, you could be a Muslim, or whatever you are. But this question is so, man, it is such a, it's such an important one because a lot of us, we have been grown up on the whole idea, sex is wrong, sex is bad. And then now here we are about to tie the knot. How do we stop ourselves from thinking with the same shameful mentality of sex? to know appreciating sex for what it is, something that is there to really unite us and something that is really there to make our relationship a little bit more intimate. Now, I want to draw an analogy with a car. You know, when you just start driving without a license, you know, say if you have your drive and you have to do this and it's like I said, cheese and peas I hope nobody not see me and you know want to run up in a police because boy if you run up in a police dog name is supper. But then you get your license and all of a sudden you just want to drive everywhere. You just want to show everybody say, listen to me, I have my license, but can drive now. Every car you say you want to jump in it and show people say, yeah, man, me can drive me a driver. Everywhere you want to go. Worse if you buy a new car. Listen to me, I'll go five minutes down the road, you yeah, drive. So go empty the rubbish right at the front of the yard, you yeah, drive from the front to the back of the yard, just for go, just for sure say, you can't drive now. It's the same thing or a similar thing with when you're getting married. Before, if you are having it before, you have your eye and do it. And you don't want nobody to catch it because you don't want to get in trouble. And you carry that guilt with you. But let me tell you, there is freedom in being married. There is freedom in being married. And we have to look at it like that. You are licensed now to love on your spouse. 
you can make her feel desired now you can look at her when you're in church and you say boy i am so blessed if i'm a woman man she just stay good so i'm a lover and a man you have your license to do that you get what i'm saying so you have to think about it like that welcome entrepreneurs alone yes Entrepreneurs Alone says, sometimes I think people have sex morphia. That is, they see it so negatively that even when it's time to have it, the beliefs around it makes it unpleasant. Yes, yes, an unpleasant experience for their partner. Yes. But as I said, there is so much freedom in being married. You have to know, appreciate the fact that, listen to me, now I am able to have it in the right context yeah and when you are thinking of it like that you are not free to love on your spouse you are free to touch them you are free to to make them feel like they are a desired person that freedom in and of itself should release you from the guilt and i want persons to actually accept that freedom because if you don't accept the freedom listen to me it doesn't even matter it doesn't even matter if before you got married you used to have sex with a spouse or if you used to have sex with somebody else before you even get engaged before you even find your wife to be we need to stop holding people's sin above them because when god is his forgiveness he offers it freely so if god forgives you for whatever you would have done before here you are now in freedom of the act accept it embrace it and free yourself from the guilt that is associated with it because now you have your license hello you have your license go on a drive driver driver okay <laughs> now question two says how does attraction change when you get married and begin having sex oh listen to me no longer is attraction a mere feasting on the body on the voice and character of another person for your own delight which is all sexual desire can be outside of marriage so there you are lusting and all them something now man or release yourself from them look at something there now we are turning it towards our spouse hello now affection is a way to build up your spouse that intense attraction that desire that you have you're using that desire to build up your spouse and make them feel like say them a king and them a queen Huh? so the attraction is increased because now you have some legal binding contract say yeah man i can just ogle my wife she has two beautiful breasts a pair of beautiful breasts our bottom round and nice someone look on our ship yeah man you can do that Remember when we are talking about in a question one, you're legal now. So your attraction should heighten. But it's all about your commitment to keeping that fire going. So you have to ensure that you are putting in the words and putting in the work to letting the person feel attractive, feel desired, and all of that. Because that is our way to celebrate the unique good pleasure that God has provided for the two of you to exclusively enjoy. So that's question two, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope that if you do have these questions, that by my answering, it would clear up some things in your head. Now question three says, if sex is painful for my wife, how do I help her through it? And this is such a great question because a lot of persons or a lot of women, they do face that, you know, painful sex or sex, pain during sex. 
some of them are virgins and we give god thanks for the virgins that some of our men will also meet up on so it will be painful her first time around but how do you help her through it now the first thing i can say is talk to her let her know that you are committed to her pleasure that you care about satisfying her and also you never want to hurt or harm her reassure her of that all right and then always make sure that you allow appropriate time for things like foreplay listen you see that word the foreplay i'm gonna do a show upon foreplay it's in a but let me tell you foreplay is important it is important listen to me it cleared away it met the right smooth uh? <laughs> foreplay ladies and gentlemen listen men are physically always prepared for sex as soon as them become hard erect them ready them ready a long time but for women we are not always so physically ready for sex right off the bat right even if your mind is telling you that yes i'm in the mood i'm ready take me if don't dare so if the way don't prepare don't dare so it might never go in and if you do it without preparing the way yes my dear you're going to feel a lot of pain all right so you have to make sure that for the men he has to make sure that he does what he needs to do in order to get her wet to get her lubricated because sex will be painful if there is no lubrication all right foreplay is a time of protection when you protect the body of your wife from experiencing pain during intercourse when you enter her also don't go all the way gauge her inch by inch and then you ask her if babes is that okay you know how you feeling you know take it slow and let her set the pace thanks for watching Please join us next time, for the continuation of this episode. Stay tuned. Underneath it all, who are we sexually? Bible, cufflinks, and stilettos, with Giselle St. James. For mature audiences only. Watch Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos on Carib Vision, midnight on Mondays, and Friday nights at 11 p.m. Sponsored by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries.